I'm like I feel really tired as well. Like my eyes, you know, when your eyes are heavy. Yeah. And I actually slept. I let myself sleep to like half ten, mm-hmm. but I'm. I kept just turning my alarm. Like I was like, push it back half an hour, push it back mm-hmm. half an hour, and then mm-hmm. I was like, fuck my life. I need to get up, and then I just haven't really functioned. I even no. had breakfast and stuff, and still I'm like, kill me. No, I, I had such a good night, you know, like it was really good, like I had a good time and I came back and was just like, I'm tired, but not like a bad tired, you know, like yeah. a, a good kind of tired. Do you have it with your insomnia where like you need like an hour of just sort of processing time before you can actually sleep yes. or maybe longer? Yeah, it's like minimum an hour. Yeah, yeah definitely. I like I, some people, are like, oh, I just got home and got into bed, and I was like, yeah, I got home and got into bed and stayed there for an hour while I was like, ah, oh, it's definitely annoying. You know, I hate, I hate people like, oh, I just got into bed and I closed my eyes and it was fine. I'm like, That's literally what Piers does. I like he just gets into bed and then he starts snoring. I'm like, how, how do I'm you s- do that? I'm like, I'll start with it and then something will happen. Like, the most ju- I hate it. I've done that thing recently where I fall asleep with my phone in my hand. Oh um, my god, that's so scary because you're like, oh my god, I could have posted a video of me snoring like on Facebook. Oh, I have to check that I haven't. <laughs> but the worst thing is, I never do anything like that. I just drop it at some point because it's balanced in such a way that it's like that. And at some point, my hand just flops because it's like, oh, I'm tired now. I've gone going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So just as I'm drifting off, finally going away, bang, what? Oh my goodness, what <laughs> phone hit the floor? And it's like, and my first thought is always like, ah, shit, the screen. Oh my god, no, 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 fine, screen's fine. It's just I've just made a fool of myself. And then I'm like, hmm, have I woken everyone up in the house by this weird noise at two a.m. of me smashing my phone into the floor? As of yet, still no questions. So. Oh, well, that's all right then. They're probably welcome to the podcast, to by the way. You. Yeah, welcome back. Hi. Sorry, we this were... is what we talk about. Yeah, we just random, random shit, as you already know. Um, we were meant to have a podcast last week, but I had some family shit to deal with last minute, so couldn't couldn't be there. But we are here today, slightly Hi. tired. Oh, yes. Because... Chris will explain why we're slightly tired. <laughs> Did you like that? I like how you're like, fuck this, I can't explain. I'm Let so tired to explain. <laughs> um, yes, we went to say, well, I mean, I guess it was like a, maybe it's a, it was a World to Rates podcast reunion, I guess, of some kind. Um, like the first time we've actually spent more than uh, half an hour in each other's company for... A while, to be fair. Yeah. Even when I came to visit you that time, it wasn't that long. No. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. We um we yeah we we that and uh, we went to see the new Spider-Man film, Far From Home. Which was so good. It and is right, Far From Home, right? I think so. <laughs> Just, I'm so tired that my brain was like, no, that's not. I the think because like the other one's called Homecoming, isn't it? So it's like Far From Home is kind of similar, I guess. Um. I double check. No way home, far from home, far from home. That's wait. No way home. No way home. That's the twenty. Why did I think it was far from home? Far from home's just the the one before. Oh, it was on TV the other day. Uh, far from home sense. was on TV the other day, which is why I oh, got wait, used, because I've I watched just... that one, and then yes. Have they done it on the on purpose where it's homecoming, far from home? No way home. I only just. Because <laughs> that's just. Like... I only just realised that. Oh man. Is that like have they done that intentionally or is that just like accidental? Oopsies? No, no, that's definitely intentional. I just hadn't even okay. realised that. But um, I mean, we have to be careful. I I don't want to um, I don't want to spoil it for anyone because um. Okay, so we're we're not going going for spoilers, which that's probably the the good thing to do. I just think that we might lose some of our audience if we start spoiling it. True. But True. I, I, I think there's definitely ways we can um 
I mean, well, and with the power of editing as well, if one of us does slip yeah, exactly. up, we can, well, you can sort it. I was going to say, we and can sort it. <laughs> there's one thing I want to open with here. Um, well, okay, there's a little ad- additional thing that I want to say. First of all, is it Zendaya or Zendaya? Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya. I say Zendaya, but it might be Zendaya. No, no, I'll go for Zendaya. Okay, that's good. That's the first question. Tick. Second part. <laughs> I want to discuss how Piers doesn't... Oh, well, okay, we, we, we learned a bit more about his opinions, but Piers uh, doesn't think she's hot. I literally just don't understand how I can marry him anymore. Like, it's it's an issue. Like, how? And not you, just oh, Piers. Could, and Barbie as well. You suck. Hi, Barbie. Hey. For people who aren't Barbie, it's like, who the hell is this? Um, She is Kat's friend who is a... A regular podcast listener. Um, She's very cool. Very cool. Um, she drew me like... a picture of Toothless. I'm what? Very happy about that. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't show you. It's in the car. That's yeah, fucking she, awesome. She did it on a post-it note. It's really cool. I love it. Basically, um, it's like me, but in female form, which is very awesome because it's. It's, it's, always, it's always nice to have people in this world that understand where you're coming from, you know? Um, yeah. But, sorry, I, we'll come back to that point. <laughs> Zendaya. Zendaya, oh yeah, okay. So Piers then compensated that we were, like, saying, how can you not think... Oh, she's very pretty, though. You know, you're like... What? Like, what? I, I yeah. just thought it was, like, one of those things that we'd all accepted. Yeah. I thought we all, I thought that, you know, there's not much that generally we can all agree on. But I thought we were all consistently looking at her and being like, yes, she is incredibly attractive. I just don't, yeah, I, I can't understand. I say this in a respect, I'm trying to be respectful about it, but it's like, I don't know how to. <laughs> I'm, I'm so worried I just sound creepy, and it's like, I don't want to sound creepy, but great, it's a high. Last week was a good week. Um, editing this week is going to be high intensity i'm sure um yeah chris said, oh my god last week i'm gonna mention that briefly so that's okay yes um so i fucked up so badly i accidentally recorded everything in 4k yes yeah, she um, did at 60 fps is it mm-hmm. I don't know if it's oh yeah no you went all in 4k 60 fps <laughs> And what was my total gigabytes in the end? Oh wait, because I compressed it before I sent it to you. It, it was... was still like 70 or something gigabytes, the one that you sent to me. Yeah. So I was... have no idea what it was originally. It was... It was a bitch. It was a fucking bitch. That ruined my Sunday. Honestly. I was like, how the fuck can I send it? I couldn't even put one file on the memory stick. Like, I've got... um a usb phone adapter memory stick thing and um it wouldn't even let me put any of the short files on it i had to do it all through airdrop in the end which normally doesn't work but it worked with my new laptop so yeah it, it wouldn't have worked with the computer but thankfully i managed to do it through airdrop but yeah and then i got it onto my computer i was like I don't want this filling up my new fucking computer. I need to, like, work out how to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And then I was really scared to delete it off my phone in case you can open it. Yeah, on your end. oh, man. I, I could imagine it was a... Uh... Because my phone stopped working properly because it was just freaking out, so but cool. it was so full. Yeah. But I guess it didn't help because you were then also going out. Yeah. You had to go out as well, and it was just like, oh, man, everything that could go wrong today is going wrong. It was just... It but in the best way, wrong. because it's like... If the choice was you not recording and recording in 4K, I guess it was better that you record in 4K, but... Yeah, at least I didn't, like, lose the files or something. And then it was annoying because um, every time... I was saying this to Chris earlier. Every time I send my files over, if we've got any techie people there who might actually know how to fix this, let me know. Because every time I send my files over, it adds, like, a brightening filter or something. Like, yeah. the... um. It, it sort of whitewashes me a bit. And that's not me. Like, I, I've i looked at it before I even um, oh, it put oh, it like into the editing it. software. Yeah, and I can see it like that as well. But on my phone, it's normal. And then, yeah, if I if I up, 
load it and then re-download it to my phone, it comes out normal. But if it goes onto my laptop or anything else, then it goes really pale. So I don't understand. No. But you know when you're like, okay, so I've recorded in 4K, it's a billion gigabytes, and I'm whitewashed. This was so worth it. It was... Um... <laughs> I mean, it, it was just a very entertaining kind of thing. Like, when you missed me, like, I've recorded in 4K. I, was just, I think I laughed. I think I just, like, laughed for five minutes sat here because I was just like, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> you know, like, I was expecting something else. And you're like, oh, I've recorded in 4K. I feel so silly. And I was like, it's fine. We'll, I was we'll so angry with myself. I was like, how the that. fuck did I do that? And I, I vaguely remember at, when I was recording at the gig... I was mm. having issues with um, how dark it was. And I thought, oh, maybe if I record in 4K, it will be better. But that was like a week or two before. So maybe all the videos I'd taken since then were all in 4K. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, That's um, really impressive. Um, we're definitely not in 4 I mean, it was like a nice mistake because obviously 4K, you know, it looks better it's better quality than what we but even the compressed like 4k was still good it still looks yeah. great um but we're not we can't the world's rates podcast is not ready to go 4k yet definitely for not. many reasons it's not ready to go 4k the stress yeah. it caused us on one week is proof that... <laughs> if we lived closer to each other and i could drop like a hard drive to you then it oh would my be god different. yeah that would be fine i would just turn up and be like right put it on a hard drive but yeah, it's like a thirty-five minute drive, so yeah. it's not. I mean, really I you know, technically optimal. I could do that, but it's like I don't want to kill the planet and any it's more Sunday, than already killing like... the planet. Exactly. Yeah. So um, Zendaya. Yeah. Zendaya. Um, I can't let it go. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't let it go because I okay. Actually, so this week I saw that um, right. I didn't realize until a couple of weeks ago that she and Tom Holland were. A thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you? Not no know that? idea. <laughs> nothing I was completely oblivious and I saw it because people were talking about how there's this big thing that people have made out of the fact that she's slightly taller than he is <laughs> and people were like oh my god how can, how can she be taller and I was just like it's this thing that I I don't know if you've ever had it but like I definitely it's a really stupid insecurity to have right it's like you can't, can't do anything about it. you cannot physically make yourself grow anymore um, in many ways, um, but and I'm talking about height. So, okay, apparently it wasn't safe for me to come back to any conversations. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't grow any taller. Um, but for some reason, there's this whole thing about the fact that in a heterosexual cis relationship, the the man should be taller than the woman. And so, if it's not that, it's like, oh, not normal, it's like, is it that big a deal? Does I... it matter? Okay, so I, I'm not, ugh, it's difficult because oh, no. I used to definitely be like, oh no, I wouldn't date a guy <coughs> who was my height or shorter. Like, I always just sort of, I don't know, tended, to, like, had a tendency to like taller guys. Okay, but this um, is interesting. So, what is it about that? But like, but this is the thing I don't know because if, with women, I, it doesn't matter how tall they are. Yeah. Like for my attraction, it's it's men like that needs to be taller in my brain for some reason. Um, but I think personally, I'm quite like I've got broad shoulders, and I'm not like a dainty person. I'm quite like athletically mm. built. Is mm-hmm. that probably mm-hmm. like the right way? Yeah. And like going out with a, a really skinny short guy it was more like their frame opposed to so normally you don't so some shorter guys are quite like built out but typically i would say that if you're a shorter guy you tend to be a bit more like skinny or scrawny mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and it's the same with tall like skinny guys as well i just i didn't like the idea that i was going to be much bigger than my yeah. partner if they were a dude if that makes sense like um yeah i don't know what it was i think it went because uh, it didn't bother me when i was a teenager and then all of someone as an adult i was like oh i think it's because you get drilled into you that um 
and you know about being skinny is the way forward and then it's like oh my god i can't have a boyfriend that's skinnier than me mm-hmm. i guess that was it because then it was like oh well then i'll look bigger it yeah. probably comes from that i don't know yeah, it probably is it's probably like some societal like norms that you pick up along the way it's weird because like, when you said it's not the same for women i was like oh yeah interesting so maybe it's just something about the kind of standard um cishets relationships if you want to call them that um yeah, well, something about that that you know is like maybe it's like the whole thing about the man's meant to be like you know gender norms strong, strong you're gonna be able to kind of, you'll be able to provide whatever so it's like sure but then i i think if i'd actually met someone that i really liked who was shorter and um so like smaller than me in mm. frame then i think it wouldn't have mattered but I just didn't happen to meet somebody. No, no. But the weird thing is, in the case of, of Tom Holland and Zendaya, I don't think they're that different in height. No, no, no. She's a they, bit tall. I mean, she's not like massively tall. No? I think there's maybe a couple inches in it, and they're and and he's skinny and she's skinny. So yeah. like, it, it's what's the, and I mean, it, why would it matter anyway? But like, in terms of, you don't see them next to each other and think, oh, like that's a really odd pairing. No, 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 I think they're actually quite a good couple. Like they, that's the thing. It it kind of works with the film in that because they're actually like real life partners did... as well. Maybe it helps like something, the... yeah, a like chemistry or something. Yeah. So I <clears throat> I thought about this. Um, funny enough, when so I I don't think this really counts as a spoiler, but um, they they have a kiss in the film. Oh my um, god! They kiss and they're in a they relationship. Kiss. I know how crazy they have a kiss in the film and I thought imagine acting out like this little snog sesh and I know with boys sorry men um, <laughs> that when they're kissing their girlfriends you know that it sets alarm bells let's say off <laughs> in certain regions and can you just imagine being a room full of like a hundred crew oh man and you're everyone's your staring girlfriend. you're like Think of grandma, think of grandma, think of grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I didn't even think about that. That's so yeah. true. Especially like I mean they've obviously been going out for a while now, but it, you know, if you if they were in that early stages or like when they first said that they fancied each other and then you're doing kissing scenes and you're like, Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, please, please, no one zoom in on my crotch region. Exactly. And it was, um, no, yeah, it definitely, like, especially at the end, um, oh, like, it genuinely looks, sometimes you see, like, couples on screen, you're like, this does not, I can entirely believe that when the filming ends, you two despise each other. You know, yeah. like, you're like, I, I don't know this person. But it was, like, genuine, it just helps. It was very weird, but, um, you know, yeah, so I, Basically, I've ended up because of the whole, because of like the whole tall women thing, whatever. Which also seems like a thing I I think about it as well. It's like the way that it's like the whole thing is framed of like a tall tall woman is like oh a tall woman. Hmm, well, maybe she's less of a woman for it. You know, it becomes this weird like it's like there's something else going on that. Yeah, like, or it's like it is. It's attractive to be slightly tall, but then there's too tall. Yeah, exactly. I I think that's the thing that like has been the case for a long while. In that it's like, oh, a tall woman, hmm, not really attractive, and it's like, well, that's kind of unfair. Um, yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't really get it. But uh, yes. So no, anyway, I've seen lots of the the series, and I was just like, I thought we'd all decided. That um that she was clearly hot, but apparently it appears um just pretty, just pretty, so. just, just pretty. I for me this is it feels like on the same level as that time that um I I called Jennifer Aniston um oh yeah no that was disturbing. I said what I said and it, in retrospect uh, mistakes were made. You, you... <laughs> mistakes were made. Um. <laughs> Forever it will remain with me as a terrible mistake. I'm trying to think with the whole Zendaya thing whether I should take it as a compliment. 
because clearly he thinks that I'm hotter than Zendaya. So like winning. I'll take it as a compliment, definitely. That that's that's what I'm gonna yeah. take out of that. Take that and be happy. Absolutely. Or he's um, just fucking lying. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's possible. You never know. I mean, come on now. Men are, uh, they're known for uh, deceit for and lies. For being shitbags. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very possible he's just a piece of shit, really. But um, anyway, that's the guy you're marrying, so. I really like the film, actually. Yeah, um, I, it was so good watching it. We watched it in 4DX. Oh, um, man. Oh, and, bro. like, I've been to 4DX before, and, like, we, we had we had a debrief last <coughs> night, but I was like, it was never like that before. This was, like, extreme. It was so good. If you have the opportunity to go to the theatre in 4DX, do it. It's worth I've, it. I'd never been before uh, yesterday. I'd never been to, like, any of the um, 4DX films. Um, and I, the weird thing is, I think Milton Keynes was one of the first places to get 4DX. Yeah, I think it was. I'm sure I remember it being a big thing. That, like, it was one of the first cinemas in the UK to get it. But, um, yeah, I'd seen a lot of stuff, but I was just like, oh, yeah, sure, maybe... Maybe one day I'll, I'll do it and then, you know, certain things like a global pandemic, etc. <laughs> got in the way. Um, but I I didn't really know what to expect. And I guess I thought it was going to be a bit like a gimmick, like a oh, 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 whoa, you know, whatever. Um, was worried that I nearly got whiplash within the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Oh it was so God. violent. It was just brilliant. Out of nowhere, it's just like, oh, whoa, hang on a second. Like, you're just not expecting it at all. Just hold on to your popcorn, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, and what did you say at the beginning, Kat? <laughs> no, this makes you sound like such a bad person. Yeah, well, what joke. did you do? Tell them what you did. Joke. So it moved. <laughs> The first time we moved, it was really subtle, and like Chris happened to be like rearranging. I don't know. You were like you'd slightly moved or whatever. I was just shuffling in a chair, but yeah. And I joked, and I turned around and said to him, "Oh, I thought that was you, you fat fuck." <laughs> yes. She brought the vibration <laughs> from the seat because something had happened on screen. <laughs> was me moving around, and so even now when I'm, I'm like. How fat do you think I've got? No, over, like, I'm do, not do you think fat I'm like a turkey that we fattened up for Christmas? I'm not fat shaming you. I just thought it was funny that you moved, and I meant more that you had a fat ass, opposed to, you know. Yeah, well, it looks like that works out well for me, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Him having a big boot, 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 hey, <laughs> saved him because I literally spent the whole time like shuffling myself back onto the seat because I, because <laughs> I've got such a flat ass, I couldn't sit on the seat, so I had to keep pulling myself up every time I got jiggled. It was bloody it, ridiculous. Just, I just the amount of times I saw it, it was like every few minutes, just like. <clears throat> I mean, I've been doing it a few times sat here now, which maybe is a sign that maybe those chairs were designed for me. Maybe what I need to be doing is constantly, constantly like moving around and then my chair would, I'll be fine. But like, watching you constantly like, like are you, are you okay? There was one point actually in the book where um, it was getting particularly violent. And then just because at the quarter of an hour, I was, I was like, are you, for some reason, my mind went to this really dark place of just like, you like fainted because it just looked like you were being really thrown about and i was like oh fuck what if she's fainting and it was fine because you laughed about five seconds later and said like, oh I'm oh alive. lord thank god i just i don't know why i imagined it but it's just like but it was even i mean even for me it was like towards the end there was a point where i was like whoa nearly got thrown out of my chair um <laughs> it, it was i look it was really good it's really like um I was going to say it's really immersive. It is really immersive until you have, like, sound of, like, a jet of air flying out of just behind your ears. And you're like, mm, um, mm. you like, I definitely, like, pooed myself a couple of times during that. Like, there was, <sighs> it, it was like, I don't know, not, uh, there, it's when the air was firing out and it just happened randomly at one point and I went, fuck, mm -hmm. <laughs> under my breath, I was like, oh, or shit, or something. I just, like, What's his? It was like it happened behind like my like uh, legs as well, like a, and, and yeah, and he's chatting. I was just like, whoa, what the, you know, like 
as if there was some like snake or something beneath my chair. I was like, no, what? Oh, it was so. Oh, and the other thing that happened was um, within the first three minutes, I <laughs> picked up my coke. I was a greedy fucking got a, a large coke. <laughs> And like, Chris, you were laughing about something else that was going on with, I think, Barbie and Pierce. I'm not sure, but you were mm. you were sort of like semi-distracted. And I picked up the Coke and as I picked it up, the lid popped off and then we jiggled so that <laughs> all this Coke like went all down my crotch. <laughs> and then for like the whole film, I was like satin Coke, which is just brilliant. And by the time we got out, it completely dried. Um, but, you know, and you're just like... This is the first three minutes and I've managed to fuck this up royally. I oh, it's fine took... because then I also took a handful of popcorn at one point at the worst <laughs> moment and I was like, whoa, and you're eating popcorn. Oh, man. I, um, I had to actually take my phone out of my back pocket because I kept getting jiggled down so much. My <laughs> phone was sliding down as well. I was like, this is a disaster. <laughs> like, It was just so, it was so good. And um, like, you know how when you're in the cinema you don't want to make any noises because you don't want to disrupt anyone else I think there was a few points where everyone just sort of accepted like (laughs) we're all going through the same shit right now like it's okay to it it was weird it adds a bit of fun because sometimes I find that if you said you know you're in a cinema and like for a couple of hours and you get up there and you're like oh yeah you've sat there for on a position that probably wasn't wise you know like the seat might not be that comfortable yeah. Weirdly, there's something about like just like being moved around, moving around things. You get up at your hand, yeah. You know, I'm I didn't right. feel stiff when I got out. Like no? I, yeah, felt I felt fine. Quite good. I felt quite good. I felt quite um. Yeah, it was a, it's a weird. The chairs themselves. When I first went, I was like, this isn't very comfortable. And then about ten minutes in, after I nearly got whiplash, back. I was like, actually, yeah. you know what? This is designed perfectly. I'm gonna shut up. Now. <laughs> um. We thought at one point there was going to be a brawl in the cinema, which is... <laughs> for anyone who uh, understands, um, we watched it in Milton Keynes. Now, yeah. for some people, that sentence will mean nothing. But for locals, you know, <laughs> you understand. Oh, yes. We just hear this guy go, sharp, 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 sharp. And I was like, okay, there's going to be a fight behind. Bracing, and I- I'm like leaning over my shoulder, like looking around, like what what the fuck's going on? And I couldn't really see anything. And then I thought, why am I looking? Like I'll Don't get dragged it. into this. So I just stopped looking and I ignored it. And then like a minute or two later, I realized that they were all like massive Marvel fans and they were just like preempting what was going to happen. And they mm-hmm. just all started, it was the most Milton Keynes accents coming out of them as well. Like, what else did they say, Chris? There was... there was a moment later on where um, oh, yeah, something not... happens, and they were just like, please! <laughs> and I just out of nowhere, please, please! And I was like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Calm down! <laughs> and I was so into it, but it's like the most Milton Keynes way of just responding. It was like, no, please! And I'm like, oh, man, And there was this Jesus. one point that like everyone what was cheering. Happens? It was like, when, yeah. you know, you know when like, the the plane lands and then you see like American people go, hey, yes. all clapping like, yeah, we're safe. <laughs> um, it was a bit like that at one point. We just like, what the fuck? What the it fuck? Was, it was the strangest experience. But you know, weirdly, the thing is, in a normal situation, I would have been annoyed. Or like in a normal, like, Film. standard cinema, I would have been like, shut the fuck up. But There's something about being in thing. 4D anyway and it's like... Yeah. I keep going to like say things and like it's too difficult to word things without giving away anything. Oh yeah, I mean if you're a if you're a fan of of Spider Man, I think it's 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 a really good film. Um, and even if you're not, so <clears throat> I um, Pierce got me to watch like all of the Marvel films. He got me to watch all the Avengers films, Spider Man, Venom. Uh, oh, you watched Loki. the Infinity War and Endgame, that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. Um, the Loki series, mm-hmm. what else? Like, a- absolutely everything you could think of sort of thing got me to, like, watch in the last two weeks. Like, back-to-back, chain watch it. And, I mean, I don't think you needed to do that to be able to, like, understand No, 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 you could on. enjoy it even if you didn't really ever watch Marvel, but it, I think. 
it was as somebody like I wouldn't say I'm a you know I'm not like a Marvel fan like I enjoy Marvel but not Marvel super fan or whatever mm. and um it was it was a really good film and I think for someone like I mean here's and Barbie who are definitely more uh, yeah more obsessive. more under like <laughs> geek nerd level which I don't mean in a, a cruel way I mean in an entirely loving way it's good oh no like self labeled yeah 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 nerds. and you know I they're my people come on now um geeks and nerds of, of the world raise up um but uh i think even you know they come out enjoying it and it's like that's good if it can satisfy like people like us who are like you know we, we like it but we're not maybe like super super fans and then also the people who are like really geeky and really nerdy about it then it's probably a good film right every everyone's come out of this feeling like it's all right yeah and that's a win definitely so um yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I really did. Marvel sponsor us to These do. sponsor your film. <laughs> and I realised as well that it had been the first time that I'd been to the cinema since 2019. Uh, like, November 2019. Um, which is kind of crazy. That. Yeah. And I felt like with the whole, with COVID, it was, so we were in a row of four and there was four of us so we were all like and we'd all tested yesterday before we came yeah. so i felt like quite safe even though there was people and there was a gap wasn't there between was there a gap between people behind us i didn't notice people behind us but there were i don't i don't think there was anyone directly behind us no i don't think so no i, think no, I don't there think there was, was anyone gap. in front of us i don't there was yeah i think there was maybe a bit a slight gap in front of us and then there was a smaller gap for the people behind us yeah people were kind of in like pockets though right like there wasn't yeah yeah and it wasn't like you had anyone breathing near you which was nice they they were really like disorganized like serving popcorn and drinks that like just couldn't cope and i got there i was just like you know you knew this was going to be a big film what what is this what are you guys doing you know, like, and there was loads of people working. It just seemed like they just didn't have any communication with each other. It just seemed like, yeah, I don't know. It, it would be, it'd make more sense for like one person to be working on drinks, one was like person to do the slushies, one person. Mm-hmm. To, but like everyone was just running around and bumping into each other, and you're like, mm-hmm. great. This seems That's kind of the reason why organized. I didn't want to get any when I got there because I I got there a little bit late because of uh, well. Because as ever, I try and do too much. Um, so I got a little bit late, and that um, even Piers was like, "Oh, you're gonna get some popcorn and stuff," and I was like, "No, I can't. I can't even because I could just see the chaos over there, yeah, and I was just yeah, like, yeah. it's gonna stress me out more trying to do it because like it's gonna stress me out because someone else is stressed out because I'll be able to look at them running around like the panic in their eyes, and I'm like, this is they don't need that. So I was just mooching off." <laughs> uh, and um, even Barbie offered me some at some point. I was like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, nice." Just filling my uh, filling my hand with popcorn and immediately like losing balance and throwing it at someone. For the... <laughs> oh god, I feel bad for the people who have to clean up. Like after four DX, there must be all sorts that get spilled. <laughs> oh man. To be fair, we were quite well behaved. I thought. Yeah. I looked at our thing after and I was like, oh, "Could be worse." It was kind of difficult. I said to Chris, it's a shame, you know, with the old seats, how they'd fold <laughs> up. And so you could sort of like push all the popcorn down the back. <laughs> you couldn't do that. Like, <laughs> you just sort of had to get up and go, oh, oh dear. There's, oh. there's crummies. Oh dear. <laughs> this is a bit of a mess. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah. yeah um, run away. But yeah, it was great. Definitely go check it out. Um, And it was a. Weirdly, it was like. I remember a couple of years ago, um, I was a bit like, I think I'm done with superhero films now. Really? Like, yeah, because I think it was like so many had come out because I think because they were getting towards the like Infinity War Endgame stuff. Yeah. They like were working really hard to make sure films would come out uh, and like be ready to set up for it. But also then there was like, will be ever like DC, so like. Batman, Superman stuff. So it's like all this oh, stuff yeah. going on. Everyone's releasing fucking. I was just like, I'm a bit fucking sick of this. Um, yeah. And, and maybe that's where, in a weird 
perverse way, COVID maybe helped a bit because it like, because I've not really seen any for a while and like it's gonna break. It yeah. was like, oh, it's good. It's good to be back now. It's good. It's, it's good to have a little. I I sometimes get. You know, it's like you can never have too much of a good thing. It's like well, you can, you can definitely yeah. get oversaturated with it, and you're just like, I'm a bit done with this. I'm a bit bored of it. I'm a bit like. Meh. I think, I think with COVID as well, is like everything is so serious these days. Like, oh, that's true. Um, and that's not like a generational thing. I'm not like, oh yeah, we're such a serious generation. No, I just no. think during the pandemic, like. Uh, there's a lot more responsibility on young people um well thanks to everyone blaming students and <laughs> and young people for everything blaming um, students and then going into shops with their masks underneath their noses so it's like yeah good top work <laughs> next time but, why don't you just walk in here and cough on everyone yeah just sneeze and smear it across the aisles like thank you um down. but like with with all the you know seriousness that has come with Mm. the pandemic it's kind of nice to like play into the whole superhero thing and go it's it's escape just accepting yeah just accepting that it is like ludicrous but like just going with it it is especially in like and well i mean even yeah so like covid but then also the weird situations that brings where like for someone who tries to stay on top of like the news and things this whole like thing where maybe last year your prime minister broke the law and had a Christmas party when he told everyone not to have one and also half the government apparently also had a Christmas party when they said don't have one and yeah. there's this whole you know and like there's so many things going on and like the news is you know like cases going up and people are going to us it, it's like oh man um and I actually was talking about this the other day with someone because it was like uh so I thing that's like weird about the UK and stuff is that we have a lot of um it's not that hard to find weird news stories right like weird local news stories about something dumb that the other day I found one right it was a guy somewhere who's legally changed his name to Captain Beanie and he will be covering his entire Christmas dinner including pudding in baked beans that's disgusting. <laughs> Apparently, a few years ago or something. I or thought no. you were going to say in beanies, and I no, was no, like, no, 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 no. baked beans. That's. I don't even know if they're like warm. I'm not, I, I don't even know. And like, apparently, he's once like he sat in a bath full of them for like a hundred hours or something. I might be exaggerating. It's just like it's only something that I, I found it. And I was just like. Yeah, you, you do. That's you my me. country. That's the UK. That's the kind of fucking weirdness we've got on this island. Um, and I was trying to explain this, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I don't, I didn't really check out the news because it's all full of depressing stuff." I was like, "Oh, you don't have weird news stories like that?" Oh, okay, just the UK then. Um, but it's that kind of stuff, right? It's like find being able to find something that isn't a number of people dying or a number of people being ill or some oh, dumbass who thinks recently. that they're a scientist now because they watched one five minute science video on YouTube and so they're basically the same as having a degree in biology or something um, it's just uh, yeah I I think I actually I almost miss the super, uh, superhero kind of films and things yeah for sure sorry I can't I was like, you know, and just a wave of tiredness hits you, and I kept sort of like half yawning, and it was like, I feel like I'm being. I'm gonna love editing this as I'm talking, and she's like, kind of like yawning. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, no, you're here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you remember in, in school, like when you'd get told off for yawning, like, am I boring you? And it's like, it, you do you do realize that like, yawning isn't doesn't necessarily right. mean that you're bored you're just tired what is it I understand I've never understood this it's like uh, it's like and I you know I jokingly say it's people it's like I know that that's not a sign that you're well maybe it is a sign that you're bored but it's more likely a sign that you're just tired and your body is like it's one of those things that your body does like a reflex thing that just like even now I want to yawn because I yeah, heard you like about make the yawning sound and I'm like oh I yeah. feel like to yawn 
Um, and they, it's basic level, it's just your body trying to either take in more oxygen, oxygen or yeah. get rid of more oxygen. It's, like, it's, the most, it's not bored, and like, teachers are weird sometimes. Yeah. Maybe teachers, some teachers have some really high level of insecurity because they it's know like that they are complex. actually incredibly boring. Yeah. And so they think that if they address it, then it will like make it. But the thing is, by addressing it, we just hate you more. Yeah, exactly. So, I saw on TikTok, of course, on TikTok. On TikTok. But, um, I saw this one teacher on there who said, "Oh, if I see a student sleeping in my class, I let them sleep because you don't know, like, if if they're trying to sleep in your class, then obviously they're not getting enough sleep somewhere along the line." So, um. You know, and there is points, you know, people are at school to learn and all that shit, but I sort of was like, well, fair enough, you know? There's a way you can respond to it too as well, right? It's like, um, it's kind of like how we were talking yesterday about people and and um, being a good friend to them, right? And and telling them when, telling them oh, the yeah. hard truth when they need to hear it and things. Yeah. And it's like, there's a way you, do, you don't go in immediately and be like you're a fucking idiot and you same. you don't go to this child straight away and be like wake up you fucking dumbass kid what's wrong with you like you'd probably try and mention it in a low-key way say oh i'm a bit quietly. worried like are you you know are you doing okay is this fine whatever um yeah and, you know it, it's, obviously at some point if it's clear that there's just more of an issue then that you know and likewise with your friends and things if there's a point where you realize you know, you need, I need to tell you, I need to be quite honest with you about something that's happening and be like, you need to sort this out because it's not good. Yeah. Um, it's weird, but yeah, I, some teachers are definitely on a power trip, right? They're just like, oh, I feel like I need to, I need to control over something. They'll be like, you stupid child, what, you're a mess, every, you're disgraceful, you know, and it's like, this weird need you have to like belittle people like were you raised in a barn or stuff like that or like would you do this at home it's like it's yeah, like the breaking the cycle thing as well right it's like are you doing oh, yeah, this because someone's treating you badly and you're like yeah kind of funnel it into like like why would you want to pass on shitty behavior to someone else surely like i i, I know it's like a simplification of things it's like if something bad has happened to you, and you can't always stop it affecting other people, but you can try and do your best to to limit how much gets passed on, because yeah. otherwise we're all just having bad things happen and handing it to the next person. Like now you deal with this. No exactly. one's gonna. That's just. That's not fair. No, not at all. I think like recognizing that you've. It's not necessarily you've got a problem, but like recognizing that you've gone through something, so that you can then prevent yourself from, like you say, br like bringing that f to the next generation. Like, yeah, and it's crazy. I think I think one of the scariest things I find about the idea of being a parent is messing up, and even though yeah. because you because you know you will mess up at some points, but you kind of just have to accept that that's going to happen it's probably the scariest I have to imagine it's the most terrifying thing it's like knowing that you almost have that power to really mess up another human's life in a way that you never really have otherwise yeah there's a lot of responsibility there it's the most terrifying part I can imagine about having children it's like and I think I don't know if anyone ever truly learns to look after themselves. Like, and that sounds weird. Like, I feel like no, no, I agree. Some people are better at it than others, but I feel like you're constantly learning about how to be a better person and how to look after yourself. And the fact that you then have to do that while looking after a human being. Definitely, especially with um. Well, I think the thing is in life, like you're again. It, it's kind of lots of things we talked about yesterday during our, our debrief. We're studying outside <laughs> Milton Keynes train station in a, what was actually quite cold, as I realised when it I got was. back in my car. Um, yeah. Having this weird chat about things. But, um, like, you can 
you have stages in your life where things are generally going okay, there's no real dramas and things, and you think, ah, I've worked it out, you know, I've got it, I've nailed it, I don't have any problems, I'm fine. And then, you know, it happens, it will happen to everyone, don't, no one is, um, free from it. The, like, something can happen and you're like, oh, I don't know how to deal with this, and like, you might have a couple of weeks where things are not so good. And, and I think, or longer, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a period of time where you have to learn how to, something has changed and now you have to learn how to live with that and deal with that and look after yourself with that. And it can yeah. take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years, you know, like it, take, it can take ages. Um, and that happens to everyone, whether you're in the best mental state or the worst mental state or a really good position or not, you know, everyone can go through this. Um, so I agree, like it's a, a lifelong journey of constantly using what you've learned from the past to try and keep yourself on track but also things happen along the way that you have to kind of you know like you get you will get you will fall over along the way and you have to kind of pick yourself up and go oh i thought i'd worked out all of these things what's this new thing that's causing me to fall over and you're like oh okay now i have to add this and it it's intense but um and then yeah you feel i must imagine when you have a child you don't feel like you have to pass all of those things on to this child yeah but it's you know there's some things that you can't you well, you can't prepare people for a lot of what happens in life because life has a way of being incredibly unpredictable 100 percent. but um yeah i mean i know for me i i it's one of those things that i you know i i'd like to imagine one day i'll um i'll have kids and things um and i wouldn't want them to go through mentally the things that I've been through but if they do then it's like you want to go to the next best thing which is trying to pass on what works for you and help them find out what would work for them in that situation yeah because I think, yeah like you'll know that your your parents never like wanted you to have trouble you know in that mental no, health not. issues and stuff and so it was just even before I went to uni when we were looking at openers and things my dad was like you know, we do have a bit of a family history of um, of struggling with our mental health and things. And if you do, you know, Aww. just know that you need to get help and things. And I, at the time, I was a bit like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's really I'll, sweet. I'll be, I'll be all right. And then you know, a few months later, it was like, oh, I want to die. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but definitely, you know. And, uh, at least he said that because a lot of people don't tell their kids about their past or their you know the family history and I think like that leaves kids confused I remember um my friend whose mum never told them that they had like really bad anxiety and mental health issues so the kid had grown up not not knowing this thinking they were a complete anomaly like the complete freak for having mental health issues and they found out later in life that their mum had the same thing and that they were actually taking medication for it. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you fucking tell your kid that you'd been through a very similar thing and that they're not a freak? Like, and mm-hmm. it, and, and that probably fucked them up even more because it was just like, well, you know, you've, you've lost trust there for... Absolutely. It's like, not being yeah, honest. Like, you can feel like sometimes when you're you're struggling with your mental health in a weird kind of self-centered kind of way you can feel like you're the only person in the world who's going through what you're going through yeah um which is not to say that you feel you know you definitely don't feel special you feel like oh my god what why am i going through this what have i done wrong and why you know am i just broken or something that's that's the biggest thing it's quite easy to feel broken with your mental health i know that i definitely have been like I said that to people before I said to my therapist once. I was like, I just feel like I'm a you know, like a broken human being. Like I'm and they're like, yeah. No, 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 no. You're not broken. You're not the only person who is facing this and you know, like it's not this isn't your life, you know, you're not gonna you, you there are things we can do to help, there are things we can do to get through this. Yeah. Um but it is, I agree, like, if you, um, especially in the case, yeah, like, if you 
as a parent, if you knew that you struggled with your mental health and you knew there was even a possibility that your your child could go through that, then yeah, why would you not th- reassure yeah, think... them and be like, look, I, I've had this too, but it's okay because here's some things that have helped me and they might not help you, but we can work out what it's going to be. I'm not saying like when your kid's eight, you're like, oh, okay, I need to tell you my whole like, mental health. <laughs> but, so like... your kids are old enough to talk, you're like, let me tell you about the existential dread I go through every morning of my life. It gets like... Welcome to adulthood, age what? eight. Yeah, exactly. But, but, like, I think if they're if they're clearly going through something, then that's probably the time to be like, yeah, I've been there. It's shit. But I got through it. So, so mm-hmm. can you. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, that's just my personal... No, I agree. And I actually wondered how you, um... Say... Um... Obviously, January is kind of Jan- the thing about January is that um, I think for most people, you know, we're talking about um, uh, seasonal effects of um, yeah, sort of that kind of stuff. Um, January for a lot of people, I think, is when it really hits because a lot of people will enjoy Christmas. They'll look forward to Christmas. They'll love it. And then when Christmas is over and New Year's is over, the thing about January is it's a bit of a shit month because. <laughs> It's still cold. It's still dark all the time. And no one has any money. <laughs> no one has any money, and you don't really have anything to look forward to anymore. Yeah. Because at least for Christmas, you had either a break or you had presents, or you had to, whatever. In January, you're just a bit like, ah, that's that's shit. And especially because it's been such an intense time. Like, you're doing so much, you're seeing people, like, yeah, you're great, hi, party, 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 fine. And then it's like, nope. Now you've yeah. got to deal with a consequence of that, which is you don't have much money left. Um, you know, you, you had a lot to drink, and now, and now you're like, oh, um, my liver hurts, or like, you know, like, and oh, that's, I put on a bit of weight. Um, yeah. <laughs> or even like middle or the end of the month where people have already given up on their resolutions <laughs> and then they hate themselves for it. I don't think um, we should make resolutions in January. I think we should wait until like, April or something when <laughs> when we've got our like we're back on track then that's when you should make a resolution and be yeah like, okay. you've you've had a couple of months to just think about exactly. things and you, you you talked yourself out of the gym membership <laughs> that you don't want because you won't go more than once or something oh, like that God. I was thinking about get like Pierce and I getting a gym membership <laughs> it's so expensive and because of the time of year everyone will want to mm. go and then you'd be in a room full of people you know and you're like if I want to work out, I can work out from home. I'm just being lazy. Like yeah. I, and the whole reason why I'd go to the gym was so that I was paying to, uh, so it paying for my motivation. If that uh-huh. makes sense. Um. Yeah, which I feel like shouldn't you sh- you should want to do it because exactly. you want to do it. Yeah, there should be a reason to do it. Definitely. So, but yeah. So January is and definitely you have you know you have Blue Monday, which is like. Oh yeah. The second or third Monday in January, I think. I forget. When most people uh you know, they report feeling depressed and and struggling after things. So I um I mean I wondered for you, we talked about Christmas, but like for you, do you think what's January like for you generally? Um to be honest, when I was working um at the pub, I loved January and February because it was so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like easy money you got stuck on some cleaning jobs but it would just be like it's fucking dead um, and you could chat to your co-workers which was just nice um, I don't know yeah there is that weird oh, okay it's the start of a new year what have I accomplished like pressure side of it but um, I'm sort of looking forward to January this year because it's Pierce's birthday in January as well. Oh, There's nice. quite a few that birthdays. Helps. Pierce's mum's birthday is in January mm. um, and then my step and Stuart has also got his birthday in January so there's quite a few oh, God. like things um, that we have to go to so um, oh I'm getting family group chat messages. <laughs> Speaking um, of you see that's what you've mentioned the family and they're like hi. I know. But no, January, like, I don't know. I I last year decided to do the 75 hard and, and I started that the day after Pierce's birthday. The thing was, we knew oh, yeah. 
we knew that we had social events in January, like for Pierce's birthday, and there was a couple of other bits. So I was like, I'm not gonna start a res- uh, New Year's resolution because I wanted to stop drinking for for a few months. Um, and I was like, I don't want to start doing that at the beginning of January because I know by the end of January I would have given up on it. So I waited until the twentieth of January, the day after Pierce's birthday, and then stuck to it. Um, and that felt pretty good because I got, you know, committed to it. And and sort of after, uh, I think it was twenty seventh of December, I started work like working out casually and before like leading up to the seventy five hard. So I wasn't completely like fucked by it. And um, yeah, no, I it gave me purpose. I was reading, um, I was reading ten pages of book every day, drinking. Mm-hmm. F- like three four liters of water oh my god no. so hydrated is that, is, yeah and like i just i don't know i was on a mission i was focused and i and i i, I might do it again um at the beginning of the year i'm not sure i don't mm-hmm. know um because i'm one of these people you know this like if i say i'm going to do something i i'm 100 percent in if yeah. i if i half up like half off it i'll give up straight away so yeah. i've got a commit to it but no to be honest January I don't think has ever been too bad for me I've always dreaded December more than January um New Year right everyone always is like what are you doing for New Year's and I never really do anything for New Year's oh my god thank you I just it's too it's too much like just have a drink at home i see even stay sometimes it's like am i actually gonna stay up oh my god i got ill at lewis's one year for new year's do you remember that <laughs> i remember hearing about it yeah i, I, I think did i talk it. i talked about it on a podcast didn't i possibly i know we've had these guys i don't know i know that was horrendous mm. i think i had the flu i'm trying to work out but it, it, it was only for a couple of days that i was ill i think yeah but it's just so embarrassing you go and stay at your boyfriend who's who's now gay mm-hmm. um <laughs> his house and then you get stupidly ill and like have to get like patted down by his mum because you've got the <laughs> sweats and no one can pick you up because everyone's drunk mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. just ideal but yeah no new year's just not not the not the one for me the thing I, the thing I always get with me is there's like okay I made this mistake I think I jinxed this year for everyone I'd like to apologise officially oh dear is it all I fault? said last year on New Year's, Year, New Year's you know what this year's gonna be my year I don't know why I decided that it, in retrospect it was the most stupid thing I could have said um it has not turned out to be my as you know 2032 2033 <laughs> When did we say my year was going to be? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was like 10 years time, I think. So 2031? Yeah, 2031 is my year. Um, so we're away up. We're away up. Um, You've got time to prepare for it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. But um, yeah, I came in this year and I was like, oh, it's going to be really good. But then, like, you know, throughout the year, there's definitely been things that have gone. It's been, like, a struggle. And, like, things are good things have happened, but... I th- the best years have been or the best starts of the year has been one where I've not set myself up for um, a fall almost yeah because I think if you give it I mean it's a depressing way to look at the world but also a realistic way um, if you go into it thinking this will be the best year ever if by the end of the year it's been even remotely possibly a little bit not good you know it feels like a disaster right it yeah. feels like a you know a mess like oh man it all went so wrong why did it all go so wrong um and that that can be a lot uh whereas if i come into the end i'm like you know i i set myself things at the start of the end i'm like okay this is what i want to do these are some things i want to do this year and it's like a resolution but in a sense of like um i'm gonna read three books or something yeah, this so example. completely realistic. It's yeah. realistic. It's something that I can do. It doesn't require a hell of a lot of like extra effort. So yeah. you you kind of feel confident that you will do it. And obviously, when you do something and you what you said you're going to do it and you do it, you're good. Yeah. Um, and uh, all of that kind of stuff. So it's like you say, it's all these like 
sometimes you start things a bit of a push, you're like, oh, it might be like five books or something. It's like, yeah, okay, that, that can be done. It might require a little bit of effort, but no, 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 that's still, still that. But like, I set myself something and I put numbers on it because it's like, if I put a number on it, then it's like, nice. So like one year, I think I had, it was like, uh, to see you or something. I think I had like, see cat and I put it on there and then I did and it was like tick succeeded like <laughs> that's so cute and it's like obviously I don't just want to see you once but like it's something you put on there it's like I want to make sure that I do this this year so I just think things that I really want to do put them on there yeah put them on there, and then I know that I can go for a year and be like yep 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 yeah and it's not like a resolution where it's like I have to necessarily stick to it and then once once it starts going wrong everything falls over it's not like I'm gonna go to the gym every week and then like two weeks in you can't be bothered and then the fourth week fifth week sixth week you can't be bothered and it all goes wrong um and yeah i definitely because christmas is such a kind of tough time i think it continues into i don't think i necessarily get worse in january but i just kind of like continue along the same everyone else comes down to everyone else is like oh my god this is how you feel i'm like yeah welcome yeah january is like when you're yeah (laughs) i'm I'm like patting the seat next to me like come on sit down gonna be a tough one buckle in um but i you know it's sometimes i i find it quite a relief to be on the other side of christmas because like okay good we did it yeah uh, and and then you know that as well because like you know the shortest day or whatever is is done so it's gonna start getting lighter again um and you start thinking ahead to the summer and things that you might get up to in the summer and even if it's very simple things like, oh, I'll be able to put my shorts back on or something. It's like, oh, I'm looking forward to that or not sit here in my chair shivering or something. Um, yeah. It's the small thing. So it, it does get you through. But I know that for a lot of people, January is tough. Um, I'm aware of it. And, you know, I think something that's always good to remember is that, um, that there are lots of people that you can talk to in terms of, obviously, uh, yeah, in the worst case scenario, people like Samaritans are available to talk to, and um, also like Mind and people like that, and charities like that are really good. Um, definitely, you know, talk to your doctor and things if you need it. But also, yeah, if you can talk to your friends about it. Yeah, and... don't underestimate the part. Because the thing is, oh, with um, not like shit on mental health charities and stuff, but partially due to the pandemic, partially due to like underfunding, yeah. it can be a really like tough time just trying to get you know on the waiting list like actually get someone to speak to like it's just it's difficult so if you can in the meantime chat to your friends about stuff it it makes it easier Mm um in my my experience it depends if you're you know if you've got good friends or not and Uh, you know you don't have to then i mean we were talking about this bit yesterday um and like the difficulty of talking about these things and I guess it may be something I thought about as I was driving back was like that we build it up a lot in our heads that if we're talking about it we have to start at the beginning and explain you know to what's happened end. and and give a full story but like it can be enough to say I'm struggling yeah right it can be enough to admit to it. someone you care about I'm not doing okay yeah. And you don't have to have an explanation. You don't have to be able to you know, they might be like, Oh, what's wrong? And you were like I don't know. That's about you know, I I definitely can understand that feeling of like you're aware that you feel awful and you've no idea why. Because it could be like a lot of things that like maybe things have got too much on top of you, maybe too much is going on. Maybe there is something that's happened but you kind of in your mind have been repressing it and, and pretending it's not actually an issue and it is yeah um yeah there are all these kind of uh possibilities um but definitely talking to people talking to your friends about it is uh is that thing i know that i think i've said to you before and just been like i'm having a shit time right now and not really been able to explain i've tried to and it's been like yeah i don't get it but you've always been really good and understanding about like just trying to to help in any way and like yeah you've never made me feel bad for not being able to tell you i feel bad because of this or if i have told you what you've never made me feel stupid for something affecting me that might not affect other people in the same way 
which is yeah, pretty good. Oh, that's I'm glad to hear that. Love you, boo. Oh, cute. Love you too, boo. But it, like sometimes you don't know what the right thing to say is, so you're just hoping what you say is good enough, you know? Yeah. Or that, or that at least the other person knows you're trying. Like I think like you should have um we should have like a color code system where it's like, like, orange is like uh I'm struggling and I don't want to talk oh like red is yeah like I'm struggling and I don't want to talk about it orange is like I'm struggling but I'll, I'll, I kind of want to talk about it like um green maybe is that's like that's what I'll do with like with you maybe like if I'm really struggling I'll just send you like a red dot or something yeah because then it's like clever because yeah. then you don't actually have to say it it's just like an understanding of because I remember sometimes at school there was this thing that, um, you remember like the planners we had, right? And things and stuff. Oh, and you could put them. a smiley face and me, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they oh were like, gosh, the idea was that you that. would put it. I don't think anyone actually used it, but the idea was that you would like turn it to a thing, put it down, and the teacher would be like, right, I'll go over and help them. And it was a bit more yeah. easy to do it than putting your hand up and doing it. And it, weirdly, I think that could work quite well with like talking about things because it, you can feel. There's definitely a stigma around saying, I'm struggling right now. Uh, yeah. To the point where you, people have asked me how I'm doing and I've, you know, I've been like, oh, I'm all right. Because it's just easier to say that than I'm awful. <laughs> you know, like, how are you doing? Hella depressed. You know, like, it, it kills the conversation quite quickly. <laughs> when they're expecting you to be like, I'm all right. And you're like, yeah, having a yeah. worse time in my life right now. Um. <laughs> and like your friends don't want you to lie like you know they want no. to know for sure what's going on with you so I th that's a good idea okay. I thought with the like colour coding thing as well you could always have like a white dot means like oh yeah uh, take me to the hospital like I need to go get like help like a panic now. button kind of thing right yeah like I, I need to get yeah I need to go to any or like I need I need help quickly mm -hmm. something like that maybe we could um I could always look at doing not like a traffic sign thing for it but like a, a, a key or something so if people wanted to DM us as well yeah um, they maybe could we'll do work that. out a system and like we'll, we'll me and Kat will uh we'll see if we can work out a system that works for us and then like maybe share it with people because I am um, I don't know if that's a, in any way where you're going I just jumped on your idea but it was just no, like it no, hit no, me no. I was like, like that could be cool that could work quite well because yeah i i am one of the self admitted i am one of the worst people at being able to say yeah things aren't great right now yeah i yeah. i suck at it so much i've never and been like pierce now. said yesterday like it's easier when you're out of it to be like oh yeah i was feeling bad instead of being like able to talk about it while you're going through it Definitely. i'm constantly apologizing for like being uh, like I spend I feel like I spend half my life having a shit time and then being like oh you know when you come out the other side of it you're like shit I have to try and explain to all these people that I you know in some cases not really spoken to for three months I'm really yeah. sorry I've been hella depressed for the last few months and at some yeah. point you get worried that people are going to lose patience with that yeah because it's like I'm tired of you constantly having these moments where you don't talk to anyone and it's like and you get where they're coming from because it's if you're on the other side of that it's got to be really difficult to not understand and, and take it as a you know did and I do something wrong as a friend did I do something wrong it's like offer you the patient ah, I get. I think one of the big things is like if you're both having a shit time and one person reaches out and needs that other person mm. to step up but that person can't step up because they're struggling themselves that's like that's tough mm -hmm. um but I think in uh, in uh, generally, I think people should offer the patience that they would like their friends to have with them. Yeah, I mean I always try to. And even I mean, if I it means. Go too far, but... And well, I guess the thing is, like we were sort of saying yesterday, it sometimes you do need to step away from friendships just like say someone's going through something and you don't know how to help them um 
and you know that they're okay on some level but they're struggling but you're struggling too and you can just say okay you know I'm gonna be a bit absent for a while while I sort myself out so I'm mentally ready to help you exactly but you just need to look after yourself first like that's cool too like you do definitely but yeah I, I agree like you, the patient thing is uh yeah you, you definitely should be um and I I'm really bad because I when I'm in that particular mental state I <laughs> I'll take virtually anything as a sign that the person who I'm talking to doesn't actually want to talk to me which can be as much as um oh putting kisses at the end of the message and you th- i remember you being like are you being sarcastic with me or <laughs> oh man it's so ridiculous like my mind will because it, it, it's thing like it's the paranoia almost it will like any like sign that it's not actually thing you're like right that you know like they don't care Just stop it and it's not real and it's not fair on them and like even give it um sometimes i'll i'll be talking to people um, it happened to me the other day when I was talking to someone and we're in a voice call and I I was I wasn't feeling good but I thought I was doing fine and then I think I said something and then the other person was talking at the same time or whatever and it wasn't like a intentional over whatever it's just a, that's how just happened. On this. Like, it happens with us all the time on this like yeah you know we talk over each other but when I because I was in that mental state I was just like Oh, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say anything and so I shut down I just stopped talking because it's like no, no they don't actually want this right now um which is kind of sad because it always makes you feel like you're you're pushing it on to even oh they, they, they don't want that they don't want that and you're seeing them in a way which isn't fair because they do want to, say, to hear about it it's not it's your paranoid brain doing it and things um yeah so for someone like me, I know that you know, being someone who shuts down so easily is like not great for me. But like, I guess if you can like, <laughs> yeah, if there's something you can do to tell people you're not okay without necessarily having to try and sit down and find a thing, it does help. I like I like the idea of like just being able to like send like a, obviously you know you got to pick like an emoji that you don't normally use. You can't send someone like a smiley face and be like yeah. What are you smiling at, you fucking weirdo? Um, yeah. That's why, like, you know, I've never used the dot emojis, friend. <laughs> no. Who <laughs> uses the dot emojis? <laughs> so random. Who <laughs> uses the I but, know um, there's a white dot, like, white circle and a black circle, I'm pretty sure. I thought they will be quite good to use. And I... There's, like, a red cross. I'm trying to think of stuff that would be... I think the thing would be though that you just send that as an individual message so you wouldn't be like um oh yeah i um went to a haunted house thing and put ghost emojis that doesn't mean like oh yeah i'm gonna kill myself <laughs> yeah no you would definitely not yeah you know like you know i mean i'm just getting the most ridiculous situation this morning where are you oh i'm stuck at the traffic lights red dot like, <laughs> fucking out <hell>, laundry <laughs> like calls the ambulance <laughs> oh my god random one Steve goes, oh, but Joe and Steve, there's his parents, both told me this individually. By the way, if you're ever in the Volvo, don't click the SOS button. I was like, it's like, right? Like, well, mm-hmm. duh. Like, it's a big red SOS button. Yeah. You go, and it's, yeah, it calls the police. I ended up on the phone to the police. I was like, <laughs> what, what did you think was going to happen? Like, oh, I didn't realise it would be able to connect to the police. I didn't think there was like, um, <laughs> Uh, like it didn't have the capability to do that and even Pierce is saying oh yeah like uh, no to be fair I, I don't understand how it called the police either but, you know you're like if it's you don't SOS, just press it do you and I guess the thing was it was like oh yeah you know I've got a new car I want to try out all the buttons but you know you're just like what and I guess you want to see what it does but I'd, I wouldn't click an SOS button no, unless no, no. I was the I time would to search. try it out would be yeah yeah I would search and be like what is the SOS button in my car what does this do and then you know when I saw it calls the police I'd be like right we're not pressing that up god I don't know if you have this on your phone but on my iPhone if I click the button by accident like if it's in my back pocket I've lent on it if you click it like a certain amount of times it starts it automatically does it 
yeah and it, it makes a noise and I, and every time I've heard it I go fuck fuck <laughs> like desperately it was one of the models of phone that it was really easy to do it on um and then they've they've changed it since I think but um I remember like I heard like a sort of beep coming out of it and I went on it and it says like calling 999 so just really pressing the button it's not working yeah stop <laughs> you just like oh my god I don't yeah I don't want to waste your time but even I, I called the police like this is a few months ago this um guy who was uh definitely on something yeah. um started banging on car bonnets like in the queue in uh, driving into Dunstable oh um and then he started going up to this guy on a moped or a scooter or something and it was actually quite dangerous because he was just wandering around in the middle of the road yeah and um pierce was like oh you're gonna have to call the police because the pl- police station was literally like right next oh door. yeah okay yeah it's that um, one. but it was more like just so he didn't hurt himself but um so i i was on the phone to the police and i was, i felt like i was wasting their time by calling them like I felt mm-hmm. guilty for calling them even though I was like making sure this didn't this guy either you didn't cause an accident yeah and I was like that's like you know that's like what you should do but I just felt really guilty doing it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I do not have I, I, my anxiety would not let me click a random SOS button no no I, I even like I found the button on my card the other day and I was like oh you've got one as well what is it? It's not even, it's not even, I mean, it's a different button. It's not like an SOS, but it's like something. It's like, you know, you suddenly notice it and you're like, what does this do? And I Googled it because I was like, I am not pressed. For all I know, that yeah. button like immediately pops all my tires or, <laughs> yeah, turns myself into a nuclear submarine. Like, I'm not ready for this right now. I'm not, not while I'm in the middle of the road. Like, like, and it, it ends up being something really very dull that I can't even remember what it was. I think it's button I would even press that off and I was just like, oh, this is boring. But, um, yeah, I def- SOS is not a button that I'd look at lightly and be like, well, I have been, yeah, I don't really recognise this road. Smash the button. Um, no. Come on. The thing that gets me as well is, like, you wouldn't have been able to hang up because there were, like... Once you've clicked it, I can't imagine if you click it again, it hangs up. I don't really... No. I don't understand. So you have to wait until they pick they up pick and then up like, oh, hello, then please, like, what do you want? And you're like... Nothing. <laughs> Sorry, officer, I pressed the button. I'm an idiot. And, <laughs> yes. I, I'm an idiot. And they, you know, you can, you, you'll hear them like go... My conscience would be like, take me in. I'm sorry to arrest me for wasting your time. <laughs> yeah. I'll turn myself in at the station. Yeah. Oh, dear. oh brother. But, um, yeah. Um, I don't really know what this podcast has been about. But it's been it's been nice. I feel like hungover. I didn't drink anything last night because I thought I was going to be driving. Oh. Um, and yeah, now I'm just like kind of want to sleep and eat way too much food oh yeah that's sort of where i'm at now yeah are you having a sunday roast today then for your dad's birthday or i don't know what we're having today i I feel like i feel like you're gonna have a good meal cooked for you i feel like that i'm not i'm manifesting that for you (laughs) any meal for me will be a good meal for i you know as long as there's a dessert involved i'm a i've got a sweet (laughs) tooth you know I am a fat fuck, pig. so I do need to. Oh, uh... you don't have to do it on camera, but you have to open one of your presents today. Yes, this is just... okay. So I don't know if I mentioned on the podcast, but Kat gave me at the start of December. She turns off my house unexpectedly with this sack full of presents. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this? Um, and so she, you know, she pulls it and says, "Oh yeah, I got this." I'm like, well, now I'm like a bit. shit friend, don't I? Oh. No, that wasn't the point. Um, and the best bit was, I was like, right, I'm going to have to go to Milton Keynes today because I want him to have it for the 1st of December. And then I find out he hasn't fucking opened any of them. Because yes, he's it's... a bad person. No, I'm joking. He, well, I'm a bad person to myself. 
because you're a bad person to yourself. Yeah, it was meant to cheer you up, by now you're. It was depressed. meant to cheer me up, and I was meant to find some time to do it, but I didn't find time to do it, and was too busy doing other things. And some, you know, consequently. <laughs> And now you're sad. It's still there, and every day I look at it, and I'm like, no, I don't want to just open it now at like eleven o'clock. That would be terrible. But um, today is the day we finally get onto it, where you gotta you gotta look after yourself. It's a good rule for everyone. You gotta yeah. look after yourself. Nourish that body with love mm-hmm. <laughs> and food <laughs> and moisturizer. Actually, always moisturize. <sighs> yeah, don't even come at me with my hand eczema right now. I'm like oh, cracking. Don't you? Especially because it's cold now as well, right? Yeah, I've stopped using hand sanitizer as well because it's just oh, like it yeah, it's help. actually burning me now. And um, yeah, people are like judging me for like walking past it, and you know, and you're like, my hands are cut open because of my. Yeah, but to be work. fair, you know, at times when you try and use it, and you get this little. I you get that thing where you walk into shop and they got this really cheap one, so you like press the thing, it's like water. And you're water like, coming out, and there's like so much of it, and you mm-hmm. just there like, oh my god! And walk then it's, around these wet hands, clothes. like desperately trying to make it dry, and you're like, ten minutes later, it's still damp. Oh, you know, what? How does this happen? It stinks. It just it's a like, smells. Oh, and like, yeah, they're really strong out. It's not like, it's not like mm, alcohol. It's like. Uh, you know, like all the sticky ones. <laughs> I remember at Reading Festival, oh. they every toilet. So then, the, um, I took some myself, but I only took a little one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I was like, well, they'll have you know a way to wash your hands there. Obviously, uh, the first year I went, but so yeah, I only took a little one and then I used the hand sanitizer there and it was so sticky. I was like, this, how is this clean? Like, how and is then you have to try and you like, I just have to wash it off now, yeah. So <laughs> it was. <laughs> Yeah, like... I hate it. But no, I yeah, and it wasn't yeah. If you don't get that, you get, you get there and you look at and you get this little like drop because it's not actually got any left in it because no one's refilled it. It's like, Great. what am I meant to do with this? Am I meant to be like desperately trying to make it like it's drying in my Stretch hand? I'm like, watching it evaporate. <laughs> like, what? So you just can't. I just I don't even bother. I I have some in the car that I use. Um, it's like it's meant to be like a moisturizing one. I'm not really sure it is, but. Um, I'll put one in the car and then that'll be fine. Cause it's just if, like a... if it's good, you'll have to send me a link. Um... Yeah, I will. I will. I uh, yeah, as someone who suffers a lot with dry skin anyway, it's uh, dry skin and eczema and all that kind of stuff. Winter is not a good time for uh, it's not a good time for skin in general, but especially if you have any kind of skin condition going on. Asthma, eczema, allergies. <laughs> suck my dick oh my god asthma as well i forgot oh man. And it's so much worse in winter i've actually touched wood been okay at the moment because i think it's not been like on the cold days it's there's only been a few that have been really cold but it's when it's damp it just mm. gets really hard to like breathe but um even today has been a bit like because it's a bit like misty and foggy today yeah i've not actually gone outside for that reason I was just oh that's like, good can't be asked to deal with the. I don't. I don't being have unable asthma. to breathe. I definitely like. I open the door. I was a bit like, oh, mm. don't want to be out in this just thick air. Shut the door. It's thick and you know not the good thick. Not like my ass thick. Not like that booty thick. That booty. <laughs> that ass. But um, I think this is our last one before. Oh, the new year. New year. So I just wanted to say um thank you to everyone who's listened in twenty twenty one. Um, it, I mean, it, the year did not quite go as planned. As planned for anyone, I'm sure. Uh, but we survived. But I, I'm glad that we started this um, nearly so a year glad. ago. Um, yeah, like, oh yeah, be excited for our one year anniversary, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, shave my eyebrows live on. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm bleach not my butthole. <laughs> Can I bleach my anus live on stream now? Um, yeah, I no, I re- we really appreciate you you uh, listening and new people coming in and you know people who listen to us on the bus or for like ten minutes here and there over a week. Uh, we love you all. And um, yeah, stick, you guys stick are with it. It gets better one day, I'm sure. <laughs> That's hopeful. 
2022, we promise nothing. <laughs> yeah, I actually know I I can't promise anything. Um, I'll I'll still be late to podcast recordings. We'll still miss weeks occasionally. Uh, oh, I know what we can promise. Well, that we'll be older. <laughs> yes, as the case in most weeks. <laughs> We, we are older, and so by the next time you talk to us, we will be older. I'm I'm not quite sure it's added a lot there, to be honest. No, and I don't really know how to now finish it, because it was going quite smoothly. I feel it like was, I and then you threw this. me off with that line. I was like, it's, it's rare that you threw me off. Normally, it's the other way around. For fuck's sake. Is this your final act of revenge? I know. This is how I get like catch up from the rest of the year. But anyway... We love you guys. We hope yes. you have a great Christmas and New Year. Yes. And we will try and be refreshed and ready to... And we'll fail. Attempt surviving 2022. Yes, we will. And there's no people I'd rather do. There's definitely no one I'd rather do the podcast to survive 2022 with than you. Thanks, Boo. That's so, really cute. Big love to you. Big love to everyone else. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.